Okay. <clears throat> Okay, hi, good afternoon. Um, I've got a lot to cover today, so I'm gonna try to get on. I had to turn the uh, I had to turn my camera around so that you guys could see what I have written on the board behind me. Um, I tried doing this the last video I made, and I had the viewfinder I had, where I could see myself on camera, so but nobody was able to, you know, actually read what was on the board behind me. So that's, I've made that correction. I've made that adjustment. I've also had to raise the camera up a little bit so that you guys don't so much see the glare on the board behind me. Um, so now you're going to be able to read it a little bit better. But I asked this question in the last video, why was Jesus born in Bethlehem? And I wanted to get that answered because I've got some other ground that I want to cover and 2020 is quickly approaching and I really want to get rolling on these plans that I've made, but I had to get a couple of other things out of the way. But um, yeah, the, the question of why Jesus was born in Bethlehem popped up in my head, and I asked all of you that, and Nathan Stevens, Pastor Nathan Stevens, replied on the comments with, well, it's because the prophet Micah foretold it in uh, Micah chapter 5, I believe verses 1 and 2, you know, he mentioned that, and yeah, the, you know, the Bible, the Bible says, the Old Testament says, Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem, the city of David, okay? Yes, the quick answer, the simple answer is, yes, Jesus was born in Bethlehem because the Bible said Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. That's the quick answer. That's the easy answer. But the answer that I was looking for goes into a lot more depth, um, it really funnels into why Bethlehem, of all the other cities that Jesus could have been born in, why was it Bethlehem that was necessary? Why? What's the importance of Bethlehem in the life of Jesus? And that's what I hope to be able to explain to you with what I have written behind me back here on the board. Uh, but uh, yeah, some of you are just joining me now. I apologize, it's a little afternoon on Sunday. In my personal life, my home life, my father-in-law just got out of the hospital. He has four broken ribs. That has been quite an ordeal through our whole holiday uh, month of December. And you know, going into January, my wife um, is, she's got enough complications as it is with her diabetes. So this has just mounted onto that. Um, my in-laws are both, they're home now. My uh, father-in-law is home now. He's resting, but my mother-in-law has caught a cold as a result of transferring back and forth. And with all of the holiday activities that, that we've been attending and my father-in-law in the hospital, the month of December has just been chaos, just pure chaos. So I'm hoping that things start to settle down a little bit, but more than anything, I love talking about Jesus Christ. I love talking about my relationship and my friendship with Jesus Christ. And I like sharing with you the things that the Holy Spirit has shared with me and has, has uh, guided me to, uh, to learn and to find out more about God and find out more about who Jesus really is. So with that, I'm going to spend some time talking about Jesus or Esau as my Lord and Savior. And I, I make no apologies about that whatsoever. I know that I have a world stage now, okay, and I welcome that, and I love that. Um, I welcome that opportunity to love my brothers on the other side of the world. I do. Um, I believe that Jesus is God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and I believe that. I believed it first because the Holy Spirit met me in my despair, in my weakness, the Holy Spirit met me, introduced himself to me, which caused me to want to read my Bible. Okay? Read my Bible, the Bible, the Holy Bible, all about God. I read that after I met the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, those are my beliefs. You're welcome to have your beliefs more than welcome. I'm not trying to push my beliefs over on you by any means. 
If you watch this video, you're watching this on your own free will. Nobody's forcing you to watch it. Facebook is allowing me to make this video and put it on, on, uh, on their website, on their Facebook page. Thank you for uh, Facebook for allowing me to do that. I don't want to um, offend anybody, so I'm letting you know now that I'm getting ready to you know, tell you a little bit of history about Jesus, about Isa, and why I believe he was born in Bethlehem. I'm taking all of my information out of the Bible, okay? I'm not making any of this stuff up. And again, this isn't written in stone. This is my opinion, and this is based off of the information that, that I have looked up and that I've researched, okay? So if nothing else, be entertained by whatever it is I have to say. So maybe you'll get something out of it, maybe you won't. But uh, I promised a lot of my, uh, my watchers uh, that I would convey why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And I'm going to jump into that right now. So we're going to go back to 1500 B.C. Okay, roughly 1500 B.C. is when most Bible historians place the angel of death over Egypt. When Moses was in Egypt asking for the release of Israel from the grips of Pharaoh, okay, there were ten plagues and the angel of death killing the firstborn of not only people but also livestock was one of these plagues. Okay, but it talks about the angel of death, Passover, okay, the angel of death, Passover, talked about in the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 13, okay, there were specific rules that God told the Israelites, this is what you need to do in order for the angel of death to pass over your house. This is where the festival Passover comes from. It's the angel of death passing over people's houses. And what it required was the blood of a lamb taken and smeared on the doorpost of the Israelites' houses. And this is how the angel of death would know to pass over that house and not kill the firstborn of that particular family, okay? This was Passover. Now, moving forward roughly, I don't know, 1,200, 1,300 years, 600 B.C., the prophet Jeremiah would talk about an event here that is going to lead into why Jesus was born in Bethlehem, okay? It's an event. So the prophet Jeremiah prophesies in chapter 7, verse 11, has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Now, I've, I pulled that particular verse out of context. I just took that one particular verse. But it's an important verse for what I have coming up. It's a scenario that paints a bigger picture as to why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Goes over to the Passover festival. That's what I want to get to now. Roughly 30 AD, okay, in Jerusalem is the annual festival of Passover, okay? This particular festival is one of three pilgrimage festivals required by law that all Jews have to attend. It's a requirement, and it's one of three pilgrimage festivals. So every year of all the festivals, there are three that Jews were required to attend. Now, keep in mind, the Jews were scattered all over the Mediterranean region. They didn't all just live in Israel and Judah. They were scattered all over the Mediterranean region, okay? Living all over the Mediterranean area. Three times a year, however, they were required by law to 
all go to Jerusalem to celebrate this festival, one of the, you know, one of the three festivals. Passover is one of those three festivals, okay? Let me go back here and look at my notes. Okay, the Jewish historian Josephus estimated at the time of Jesus that as many as two million Jews would come to Jerusalem for this particular festival. Okay, two million Jews in this tiny city of Jerusalem. Okay, that's important. That's an important clue. This wasn't just a, a tiny flea market festival. No, this is two million Jews in Jerusalem, and the whole center of activity is based around the temple. God's temple is where all of this activity is going down at, okay? That's from the Jewish historian Josephus. Josephus, I'm not sure how, you know, how that pronunciation is, but that's from the Jewish historian Josephus. Two million estimated in attendance. So, the story, of, the story that I'm leading up to here as to why Jesus is born in Bethlehem, okay? It all has to do with the festival Passover and what is required to celebrate the Passover festival, okay? Um, and it's talked about in all four of the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all mention this particular event. Ironically, it's the only event in the New Testament. It's the only time we see Jesus losing his cool and becoming very angry and taking out his angry on the people there. Now, while I'm researching this particular story, and I'm coming up with this information here behind me, I'm looking at different translations, English translations of the Bible talking about this particular story, okay? The event where Jesus calls his temple, God's temple, a den of robbers. Many editions have watered down that term to describe that term as, you've turned my temple into a, a marketplace. You've turned my temple into a place of business. As if, in my interpretation, to water down the whole event, and to question why Jesus had to become so violent, why Jesus had to get so angry, almost as if it's it's just a flea market. It's just it's just a lemonade stand. It's it's just a, it's just a yard sale. It's just people conducting business in the temple. What's what's the problem with that? Well, I went in and I looked at the original Hebrew word, the original Greek word used to describe what editors looked at as, as robbers, okay? The word that I found was lestis. And what Bible Hub describes that particular word as, lestis, is a robber who's not afraid to use violence to get what he wants. This, this is like a pirate. It's, it's somebody who steals out in the open and isn't afraid to use violence to get what he wants. I mean, this, this is a dire term, robber. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah said that Jesus would say that his house is turned into a den of robbers, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all say the same thing in the original Greek, lestis. This is the word that they use. The original Greek word they use is lestis, and it describes a very violent robber, somebody who's who's out to get what he wants at all cost, okay? This is why Jesus became so angry. This is why he took out the cord and he, he whipped people, okay? Here's more to the story. In uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all talk about this event, but it's John chapter 2, verses 13 through 16 <clears throat> that I want to read to you. Okay, here it is, the book of John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle 
sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those he sold doves, he said, Get out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? The NIV has interpreted what he says here into a market. But the actual words here was a den of robbers or a den of thieves. That was the actual words that Jesus used. So, mind the interpretation when you read. A den of robbers. Money changers. Anytime that we would read that in our Bible study, it's, 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 it's a word a lot of times that gets read over and you kind of wonder, well, what, what does that guy mean about that money changers? Well, here's what's going on in the temple at the time. Okay, here's the aha moment. It's, it's like the whole Old Testament funnels down to one man. One man, Jesus Christ, I believe. All of the Old Testament funnels down to the birth of one man. Now, here we are in the year 2020, and all of the different Christian religions, all of them, all the Protestant religions, going down to the Catholic religion, going down to the Orthodox religion, all of those religions point back to one man. I just, I think it's, I just think it's awesome. <laughs> um, it's, it's really interesting. But here's the scenario. Here's the situation. You've got livestock being sold in the temple. You've got money changers in the temple. Why? Okay. During the Feast of Passover, it's required by law that a lamb is sacrificed. A lamb is sacrificed and a lamb is eaten. And there are rules here in the Bible as to how this is done. And this isn't just a small event. There's two million people, according to Josephus, two million people in the city of Jerusalem that all have to have this perfect lamb. A lamb without blemish is a requirement of the law. Okay, so here is a scenario whereby the Jews could stand a chance, the Sanhedrin, okay, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious teachers of the law, the leaders, the rabbis. Here's a situation where these guys can make some money out of this deal according to the laws that God has presented, the religious teachers of law found a way to not just make a little bit of money, but to make a whole lot of money. Two million Jews in the city of Jerusalem, they all have to sacrifice a perfect lamb to celebrate this, this feast, okay? A lot of you are starting to see some dollar signs here. I know what you're thinking, but it gets a lot better. Okay. When all of these Jews come from wherever, a lot of them aren't shepherds. A lot of them are businessmen. They're merchants. They don't have a sheep. Where do we come up with a sheep? Well, <coughs> religious teachers of the law, the Jews in the temple, let's sell them a perfect sheep. But where in the world are we going to get, you know, even half too much? Where are we going to get one million perfect sheep at? Here's an idea. Let's raise them ourselves. But we need a place close enough to Jerusalem that we can raise all of these perfect sheep because we will be the ones who determine what those perfect sheep are. Okay? So maybe they're kosher sheep. Maybe they're kosher lambs. I, I don't know. But the religious teachers of the law, they're the ones who decide perfect sheep. Now, to sell a perfect sheep, you're going to pay premium dollar for a perfect sheep, right? Now, here's the other market they've got. The other, what is it, extortion? 
uh, racket, the other racket they've got going on, okay? Here you have the temple, and you have the temple treasury. The temple treasury only has Jewish coins in the temple treasury. If they allow coins from other countries in the temple treasury, they're contaminating the Jewish coin. So, to keep other world coins out of the temple treasury, they need money changers. Exactly. Tables of money changers that Jesus overturned. These are the money changers. Now, the closest thing that we have to money changing today is the Forex, the Foreign Exchange Commission, where countries decide whose money has more value than another country. Okay? These are money changers. And the Jews would require a whole lot more money. Their, their coin, obviously, was going to be have a higher value than a Roman coin. And this is where they were also raking in the money. Okay? So not only were they making money by selling the perfect lamb, the perfect lamb for sacrifice, but they were also making a bunch of money by exchanging the coins. Okay? You know, here in the United States, we, we often make fun of the Mexican peso. You know, we can get thousands of pesos compared to the dollar. Um, Canadian dollar, a little bit less. You know, not we can't get as much. But anyway, the United States dollar is, is very valuable in the world. Very valuable. Okay? So in Israel, the Jerusalem, the Jewish coin, was the value of currency. So here you've got the Jews making a whole lot of money. So why was Jesus born in Bethlehem? As I believe, okay, as I believe, because Bethlehem is where the Jews raised the perfect lambs for sacrifice. And that's the answer that I was looking for earlier as to why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. This is where the perfect lambs for sacrifice come from is the little town of Bethlehem. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this has been educational, entertaining, if nothing else. And uh, I've got some more videos to put together. But thank you. Have a great day. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks. <clears throat>